Fourth principle of Hemisphereian College. Actually, the support from Sir uh, Chen, I used to support us and motivate us to do this kind of a webinar. Thank you, sir. And I welcome you, sir, to this webinar. Thank you. Next is our IQAC coordinator, Najla, ma'am. And our self coordinator, Dr. Sabri, sir, I welcome you. And and presented here, and other faculties and other distinguished delegates presented here. I welcome our eminent resource person, Dr. Miss, it is not audible. A respected chief guest of today's function, Dr. Sadish Nair, head of the Department of Psychology, Dr. Aishwarya Deshmi, coordinator of self-financing programs, Dr. Habib Brahman, IQAC coordinator, Dr. Najila, and uh, the other faculty members and the participants of this webinar. I am indeed happy to know that the Department of Psychology is organizing a webinar in connection with the World Suicide Prevention Day. Actually, it was uh, an initiative of uh, WHO to observe September 10th as the World Suicide Prevention Day every year. It was that decision was taken by WHO to give an awareness among the public oh, about shit. the increasing number of suicide cases worldwide and how what are the measures that we can do to prevent the suicide and actually there may be many reasons for the people su attempting suicide or uh, for the suicide attempts but the title of today's webinar is focusing on how we can work together to prevent suicide there may be, even though there may be many reasons for suicides we can work together by giving a we feeling giving a consolation giving a solace to those people who are having mental distress depressions etc that leads to suicide and i hope through this webinar we get an idea about how we can work together and in this context especially in the pandemic situation the number of suicide cases and the number of suicide attempts are increasing because of the loneliness that the people feel. The student community also are feeling some kind of distress and depression uh, since the colleges and the schools are not opened and they are uh, not getting the company of their uh, classmates. And uh, it is a reason why the pandemic situation. And we can work together again. Uh, for decreasing this this tendency and uh, we get a good i hope uh, through this session dr sadish nair will to prevent this uh, suicide attempts and once again i would like to congratulate the department of psychology for organizing this kind of uh, this webinar and uh, i form I, I declare 
the webinar open. Thank you. Thank you. Now I call upon the Dr. Habib sir to give the words of felicitation. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Is it audible? Yeah. Can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. It's audible. You can continue. Okay, right. That is very important. So this is part of you know. So very happy, and I'm very thankful to Department of Psychology of this uh, MES College, Malangiri, Malapuram, and uh, the faculty there, the principal there, who are uh, very keen on organizing such a program, such a platform. It is very good to, very nice to see you all. And thank you very much for uh, inviting me for this program. And uh, particularly, I have a person, student, Nisar there, he's the faculty there, I think. He's the person who contacted me, I think, connected me to your department. And I am thanking to him. He was a very vibrant student here. When I was in mental health center at Tuvandrum, he was there as intern. And uh, I know that he's very keen and very vibrant, following whatever we provided there. And there were some good experiences other than our conventional teachings. Like we visited a disaster place. We had a program there. It's a government program on intervention in disaster sites. Oki, or I think if this, you all know that uh, Oki disaster happened here in Kerala and particularly in Tuvanam coastal areas. And I took the students there, and uh, Nisar was there with me. And we were having some plans, but I couldn't continue that since I left government service or retired from government service. So once again, I thank you all. And uh, before entering into the subject of preventing suicide, let me share some of the things like what are all going on? What is the existing scenario in Kerala and around us? I am, as you all know, that I am a clinical psychologist in Trivandrum and about last about 25 to 30 years in this field. And I'm heading an association of clinical psychologists in Kerala and involved in several activities related to this. I'll just share you what we are doing on it. You all have so much of information in the internet about suicide, uh, disaster, crisis crisis management, information is there, a lot of information is there. But the thing is that, how to make it work in a scientific manner is the important thing. And depending on the community need. IACPKR, Indian Association of Clinical Psychologists KR, is doing some programs like you all can, I think, associate with that. One of the things, at the starting of COVID in, in India and Kerala, we have made a crisis intervention team of about 60 clinical psychologists to volunteers who are attending calls all over the world, not only in Kerala and India, in different languages also we were attending and providing psychological intervention online, day and night, from last uh, March, April onwards. And it is, now also it is going on. But now, considering the focus on suicide and suicide prevention, which is increasing in alarming rate, even among children and adolescents, we have decided to focus more on that. And we are doing a same kind of program in association with agencies here in Kerala. And coming Saturday, 12, we are having opening a public program on that. 
and I think you all can join. We will share the meeting ID and all. Uh, in which other guests are also participating from police, from film field, from uh, psychiatry, from clinical psychology, psychology from all fields. Mm -hmm. There are guests who are participating in that public program on 12th Saturday evening. And you are all welcome for that also. And we have, we have formed a crisis intervention team that's about 50 to 60 members in that. All are clinical psychologists, but we are uh, relating with other agencies also. And you all can be connected with that and avail the services also. And uh, another thing from the point of view of Kerala government, you know that there are some projects which is going on, like Chidi project, which is being run by the government in association with other agencies like police department, psychologists, psychiatrists, etc. And it is uh, recently started only. And I don't have exact data or uh, information regarding what is going on. Today or day before yesterday, some, some calls I got asking support of clinical psychologists. I think there are not many clinical psychologists involved in that due to some reason I don't know. And there are criticisms also against this uh, project, CD project in the beginning, that how these student police cadets involved in counseling of students. I don't know whether anywhere in the world students are counseling students or children who are under undergoing crisis or stress. And that is a new initiative in Kerala. Plus and minuses without wait and see. I don't know how they are trained, how they are capable of doing, and so many issues related to that. Um, I like to share before entering to the subject of suicide prevention. I like to share some more information. You can get across us through our website, our clinical psychologist website is there. You can search and see. We have a Facebook page on uh, government, sorry, Indian Association of Clinical Psychologists, Kerala region Facebook page. I have a, a website on psychology like mindmedia.in, mindmedia.in. One more thing, very important, I have to share with you, where you all can join and participate is a national initiative. We have initiated a group at national level, like it's a telegram group on all psychologists in India. Psychologists means all postgraduate psychologists, as well as psychology students. And I welcome all of you to that program. And there also, that's a group, and we are planning several programs uh, in different areas. And one of the one of our priorities. Crisis only. Crisis means in this COVID period, we all know that the world is moving towards a different dimension. And WHO rightly pointed out is that not only in India, all countries are under strong stress and the mental health problem is going to be a major issue in coming times. And considering that our national network of psychologists is going to be formed by this group so that all can join and you can contribute, you can learn and receive training. We are planning some training programs also to equip psychologists to deal with emerging, newly emerging issues and problems in the community. And the link can be shared in your group or I will share with your coordinators here. So once again, I thank all you, all of you, participants, coordinators of this program, and let me introduce about the issue of suicide, the concept of suicide, and psychological aspects related to that, and this year's WHO's theme of working together 
to deal with the issue of suicide or preventing suicide. The pertinent question which is being asked is why a person decide to end his life? See, there are various agencies involved in, seriously involved in dealing with this issue of suicide. Who are all those? NGOs are there, governmental agencies are there, scientists are there, psychologists are there, other mental health professionals are there. Despite all these, this suicide rate is increasing in alarming rate. Why it is? So, who and what will give direction to us, to mental health professionals? I don't say that mental health professionals are the only people who are competent or capable of preventing suicide, and it is not possible. But what is the role of mental health professionals? Mental health professionals or any health professionals, their role is to follow scientific guidelines. There are so many things which works for and against and neutral. There are so many factors which prevent people from committing suicide or thinking about suicide. There are so many factors which is promoting suicide, which is making a person think about suicide. But how will we decide that? What is related to this? For that, we need definitely we need research and scientific guidelines. Who will do that? I think in India and Kerala, we are lacking a lot in this area of developing a scientific protocol and doing research. This is at this point, you postgraduate psychology, faculty, universities, they should give priority to mental health, not only mental health, particularly this crisis issue, like suicide, not only suicide, trauma, COVID has induced huge trauma in the minds of most of people. Trauma means it's a painful experience. You might have heard about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That is a well-known condition. And this COVID has aggravated this issue. This trauma, dealing with trauma, is a primarily a job of mental health professionals. And I'll say that 75% uh, of, of these mental health professionals, or more than that, are not equipped to deal with this trauma or making people deal with this or come out of this trauma. Recently, a group of psychologists uh, from India I think it will be less than 5%. And they are they have taken training. I also I am also part of it. What is called EMDR. You might have heard about EMDR. Eye movement, desensitization, reprocessing. It's a major therapeutic protocol, therapy, by which helping people to come out of their trauma. So in COVID times. EMDR Association International as well as India also formulated a plan and modified their protocol to deal with trauma because mostly people who are undergoing this trauma is having feeling that they are either trapped or they are restricted or they are under uh, they are anticipating severe undesirable consequences like illness, isolation, death separation, financial loss, loss of relationship, all these are being anticipated which need lot of lot of effort from mental health professionals. So it is high time for us to be equipped and trained in these areas which is not that difficult if there is a will and there is joint attempt. But whatever way possible, whatever way we are educated and equipped, we have to use and we don't need to wait for any other thing to help us or support from, for support from external agencies. So I was asking, what is making a person to commit suicide? It's a very simple question. Questions are very simple, but answers are not that simple. 
So American Psychological Association, I have attended an, attended an interview between two professionals, uh, scientists regarding one is a suicidologist and another one is a mental health professional. So they were talking about what makes a person commit suicide. So the pertinent question in the mind of mental health professionals, either psychologists or psychiatrists, is that is there any scientific reason? Yes, there are so many reasons. See, so many sections of people talk about these reasons. But when we talk about these reasons, we cannot talk loosely about these reasons. So we have to check whether there are studies or researchers, trials on this. Yes, there are studies. I'm very happy to share with you that worldwide, there are very, very good research going on in this field. And there are large number of studies and uh, trials going on and there are very fantastic findings i think we all have to go through that and you have to utilize it do you know why i am not reducing the importance of working together or giving intervention to people but if our intervention has to be effective we should look into the scientific data when we are doing it if we are neglecting that our interventions not going to be effective. I that is the major criticism against some of the programs which is going on even by government. And even mental health professionals like psychologists and psychiatrists, even on prominent psychiatrists, criticize the government's TD project, mainly because the formulation, the plan, and the execution was unscientific. I think they have corrected several of it and hope it will come out better. So, when somebody commits suicide, there are various factors, multifactorial things involved in it. What are those? As you know, some factors are, all of you know, very common, like loss. Loss, loss means what? Financial loss. A loss of relationship, fear, fear of what, fear of death, fear of illness, fear of uh, isolation. You all know that in this COVID time, this has multiplied the attempt, the ideation, anticipation or the completion of suicide has increased. And this study shows, these studies are not after COVID, these studies are before COVID. When I checked these studies, what happened in, during COVID time is an experimental evidence. Do you know there are several factors, as I said, contributed to make people to commit suicide? Among all those factors, some factors appear again and again, before COVID also, after COVID also, not after, but during COVID also. And those factors are let me share, if I share with you, some of the things, major things are lack of social connections. This is a very important factor which is getting reflected in several observations and studies repeatedly. What is this connectedness? You all know that in this COVID time, there is a major threat to this social connectedness. Now I am talking to this media. This is virtual. I cannot see you. Most of you are... You are uh, Videos are off, your mics are off. I am fighting in the darkness because I am not seeing you. I am not able to see your emotions, reactions, what you are feeling, what you are telling. So, what is connected? I have to be connected with people around me. With my, even with my father or mother personally, I had, I had a crisis two weeks back. I will share it if there is time later. See, this is a crisis we all are getting, all are ending up with. Who are all? Psychologists, psychiatrists, health professionals are at risk. They are all in crisis. Health professionals are the people, health workers and health professionals, those working in hospitals are the people who are at heightened stress and fear. Why? Danger threat is very near to them. So, they are at the peak of fear. 
So when we are giving support, crisis support, like counseling or intervention, our first priority is going to be health care programs. I don't know how many of them pay for I, from different parts of India, many people contacted us and I don't know how well we are able to impart our health care. So, one of the major things observed in studies is the social connectedness, social connection. This social connection sometimes may not be real. It may be a perceived, a perceived threat or a perceived fear that I am alone. I am not connected to people. Like that, there is another factor is that I am a burden to others. That is a very, very negative cognition. You all know what is meant by negative cognition. I am a burden to others. I am alone. I don't belong to anybody. There is lack of belongingness, lack of social connection, either real or perceived, and a feeling of burden burdensome with people. So these are all the factors which stand out in studies. But I am not limiting that to that only. There, definitely there are factors like financial loss, uncertainty about future. future. During this COVID time, many people lost job, lost finance, lost relationship. This is a very, very huge, big problem. How will we help them? How we medical professionals will help them? How far we will be able to reach to them? I think among us also, many people are struggling. From Australia, from Canada. I have friends, clinical psychologists in Canada, Australia. Some are running, hospitals, uh, running centers. Some are working in centers. Some are uh, uh, running their own. They are also in trouble. Their income has gone down. They are under threat. So mental health professionals are also not free from this. So COVID has brought such a situation, unique situation, where the challenges are unique and you see it is to all, all. So that is the speciality of COVID time. So in this COVID time, we have to incorporate our knowledge and skills from different dimensions. Our conventional study learning skills may not be enough. It is because of the challenges, the nature of challenges. Because when I am treating somebody, I myself is ending up in trouble. So my security is being threatened. And my existence is being threatened. So I have adding to my challenges. When I am comfortably sitting somewhere and talking to somebody, I am consoling somebody or I am doing psychotherapy to somebody, Fine, but if I am also in trouble, see, it is adding to our challenge. So that is why we have to increase our strength. We mental health professionals also should be strong enough to deal with such a situation. How we can be strong enough? That is the theme of this WHO. Working together, we have to gain strength from interacting, from being together, being connected to each other. So there will be disputes, disagreements on various aspects. I was also criticizing the government program. There are disagreements. But after all, we are all working for the same purpose. So challenging this time, challenging this stress, challenging this trauma that requires enormous strength and it is demanding so much of strength from us, particularly from mental health professionals. So considering this factor, I think the training program, uh, importing skills, knowledge should be modified. And I am offering, I am offering from myself, from our clinical psychologist uh, association or faction, I am offering training programs, uh, support programs, and uh, togetherness programs. If your college, other colleges, universities are taking initiative to make it available to all. Second thing, as all of you know, it is well known that mental illness, psychological disorder contribute a lot 
to the issue of suicide. There are various studies. You all know that depressive disorder is very common. It's a very common and heightened common factor, which is uh, contributing to the process of process or I'll say I'll, I'll say it is process. It's a suicide is a process. I'll say I'll, I'll come to that why it is. And uh, I think we have 15 or 20 minutes. I will just summarize the major things. The mental illness factor we mental health professionals are primarily dealing with. And if mental health, the mental illness, particularly depressive disorder, is the reason for that contributing to suicide, then of course treatment of depressive disorder is the primary thing as far as mental health professionals are concerned. But the problem comes when we are not sure about you. There are examples in front of you. Sushant's case is now, now the dominant talk in the media. How and why this has happened. It is mainly because he is a celebrity. Is it sure that he is having the perceived disorder? Is it sure that he is not having the perceived or something else contributed. Is it uh, suicide? Is it uh, murder? Many things are unclear. So how we will come to this uh, confusion? Of course, we mental health professionals have a major role in, in identifying and in screening people whether they are having a disorder, mental disorder, not only depression, any other disorder. What for? Not just labeling it. Not just isolating them, that will worsen the situation. Just to know that they need help, just to give them help for that only. So, so, so we have to be keen and aware of such an issue. No doubt mental health. But see, mental illness is the reason for suicide. Not only for suicide, mental illness can create a distress in a family where mentally ill person is there. So all are in, all are getting into the issue of trauma, stress, distress, sleeplessness, all these things come. So all of them need help, so it's a stress. So if mental illness is not dealt with adequately, then this problem remains unresolved. It will be getting, getting into others, so their mental health will also be affected. So, it is an urgent need to provide effective service. To now, COVID, that also is a problem in COVID time. Myself, I'm a clinical psychologist, I'm a practicing clinical psychologist in Chivandra. Last year, one or one and a half months, I am not directly seeing patients. I'm not directly giving service to clients. Many people are asking, so or I am this thing, that thing. I'm trying to educate them why I'm not seeing them directly. But I'm providing service to Through videos, we have good platforms. Google Meet is there, Zoom is there, uh, so many platforms are there. By, by which now I am happy. In the beginning, I was also having a doubt that whether how effective I will be able to give service. Not to all, but 99% of the people who approach psychologists, I'm not telling about psychiatry. This service can be given if we are equipped to provide. But only thing is that the other person should be able to access it. That is one of the problems which we face. The other person need to have a uh, internet, internet a speedy internet facility without which it can be possible. You all know that this is very important. Technology is very important in this COVID time. The first student suicide in India happened in Kerala. You all know that. Right? Anybody, anybody studied what happened in that case. It's a girl student from Kerala, 10th class student. She's not an average student. She's a brilliant student. She got award for academic brilliance during her uh, time in school. She committed suicide. How disastrous it is. Why is it? Because she was having a she, she didn't have internet facility in her house. She was not having a proper TV. 
was a damaged or reputedly bad. She was she she is a good student. She want to score high. She is being appreciated. She is having a social status. Suddenly, a kind of situation came that she is unable to access whatever is provided through online. This is this has turned out to be a major mental health problem. So we declared online education, which is good, which is now that is the that is that is what that is only possible for what is possible now. But all are able not able to take even now. See, such a such, such a situation created a mental health problem. She was not having any depression. Why I am telling this is that I was talking about the role of mental illness in suicide. This girl was not having a mental. Illness. She was a perfectly all right girl. She was a brilliant girl, but she ended up in a situation, mental health situation, by which she committed suicide. She completed. She committed suicide. This has been. Just because this was unavailable, and like that, see how fast these factors are operating into the minds of people. Without allowing somebody not to go, out, a person near to my place, a twenty-four-year-old boy, he was prevented by his family people not to go out in bike, particularly in this time, lockdown, very dangerous. He didn't say anything. He just went into his room, locked his door, and committed suicide. And what is happening? So where we are failing, where we are not able to help them. So I am jumping into some of the major things like the ideation part of it. Many people having mental illness or not having mental illness are ideators. Ideators means that desire to commit suicide is there. That does not mean that he will commit suicide. See, this is at this juncture, mental health professional has to intervene. So we are screening whether somebody, whether he is having depressive disorder or some other disorder, or he is not having any disorder. We can check whether what is the mental status of him if we are concerned about it. Suppose he is having heightened distress. We should be able to send. There are signals of. That is what I am coming into. Actually, if you have to, to make a, an effective learning on this, we need a, a long session. And now, this program is beyond the scope of this program, but it is possible. If you are there, I am there. But see, these warning signs. What are these warning signs? American Psychological Association recently conducted a study. We all have been studying it for long, but this COVID time demands a lot. What are these warning signs? These warning signs. I'll just sharply point out only one thing. Just before somebody attempting suicide, what happens? Just before attempting suicide, that was being sharply studied, not here in America. We are blaming America for several things, but I'm saying very good studies are coming out, not only from America, from many other developed countries. We are not having that much. So, what is happening just before committing suicide? How we will identify it? Some of the things we all know: there are common symptoms with the depression, with the stress, with the Other mental health conditions; these symptoms can be there, but it is very difficult to differentiate. If we have to differentiate, we should know that through research, through trials, through studies, we should, somebody should tell us sharply that these are all the signs. These are all the signs. See, one of the signs what found just before somebody is, has decided to commit suicide. One of the signs is he is restless. He is agitated. We can identify easily a person whom I know previously. The difference in his behavior, whether he is agitated, whether he is restless. What is this? This like that a psychologist or a non-psychologist, even a non-psychologist, is able to uh, differentiate. This study shows that agitation, restless in a particular way, 
sleeplessness. Sleeplessness. Uh, meditation, sleeplessness. Some sometimes he may verbalize also. Not necessary is that he will verbalize. But if he verbalizes, okay, well and good, you will get something from that. There are a kind of negative verbalization that expressing his mainly his helplessness. These are all some of the major things which comes out from a person who has decided to commit suicide. But unfortunately, we mental health professionals also may not be able to pick up that because we are not that sensitive. And many other people show restlessness, sleeplessness. Particularly when we are seeing patients with a depressive disorder or psychotic illness or with a trauma, with PTSD or a grief reaction or what, they are all show these things. In that case, we need detailed, a kind of detailed evaluation. But we, since this is being told by a major research study, we have to look into that seriously. Now, shall I ask the host, shall I continue or do we have to interact? I am more, I am, I mostly I like to be interactive, I like to be interactive so that otherwise I will be continuously talking about whatever I want. If people okay, want sir, something, now, they can talk to me so that let us proceed towards yeah, that. Yes, sir. So Focus now we are entering uh, to the question and answer. So participants, See, I did, I if you are having any kind of question. I didn't say anything about the prevention part. I just was talking about what is the easier and what is the, what are the warning signs. Prevention part, two, three sentences. After that, let us go towards uh, discussion. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, See, sir. You can prevention. Come How to prevent? Because we know certain things. Somebody is having mental illness. Definitely, no doubt, he has to be treated at the earliest. But the question is whether we are able to know that he is a Sushant. Nobody knows that he is a whether he is a depressive person. There was one person who was treating. That treating professional also was in trouble. <laughs> you may be knowing that whether whether he is a true professional or whatever it is, that case is going on. That is one of them. Second thing, not due to, I, I have so many data to share, but no time. The, in America, there is a state, Montana. The, there, what happened is that during a period of time, there is huge increase in suicide rates, that particular city. So, the scientists were surprised why this is happening. So, you may be knowing psychological autopsy. Psychological autopsy means after committing suicide, after death, assessing what happened to him before death or during the process of committing suicide. Their studies show that in that part of the world where this much of suicide happened, which is which was not due to mental illness. That is what they are right. Because they checked the records, they checked the uh, history, they, they interviewed the uh, people around them, but they didn't found that the status of mental illness is like any other place, any other states, but what has happened. So they observed that other factors were very prominent at that time. Even in a prosperous country like US, the uh, suicide rate is very high, very high. In that particular state, they studied that life in even contributed. Two reasons. One is there was loss. Job loss or financial loss, something was going on. Moreover, that their tolerance for this loss is very low because they were enjoying so many material prosperous things, finance, relationship. They are celebrating so many things. But something happened in the financial, economic, those, those kind of things, areas, and there is a decline in their physical facilities and surroundings. In India, we always have this. In that place, that was something which is uh, unexpectedly happened and people are finding it very difficult to cope with that. So that has increased that. So preventing suicide, we have to consider these factors. We, mental health professionals, has to take a lead in this. Why? Because we have a scientific base. When others are participating, we have to 
definitely get their help because we cannot we scientists cannot reach the community at large so spiritual religious organizations has a very major role to do in this because they are the people who are reaching large masses politicians has a very major role to do they are reaching large masses but what is lacking with them ngos and even ngos what is lacking with them is they don't have the scientific guideline so we mental health professionals has to provide that so that their work will be monitored and otherwise these things will not give result so this is the guideline by which we have to so all people in the community ngos uh, groups religious organizations political organizations all of them have a role but who to who should take lead in this particular area is by mental health professionals and that was the criticism we made while this government is implement trying to implement that project in schools which went in the wrong direction but they are now i think they are getting correct let us see what happens now let us proceed to our uh, discussion okay so now we are moving on to the question and answer section so uh, friends if you are having any doubts or queries regarding the session you can post it in the chat box provided Um, if somebody can so speak sir, out this question. Okay. We are having a couple of questions. First is from uh, Prida Ek. Uh, I know a person who was an introvert now, and in this COVID situation, is an he is an outspoken person. Why? That's a question from Prida Ek. Yeah, it's a very interesting question actually. This COVID time makes all are all introverts. why because there is social isolation no connectedness so this introvert he might not be an introvert suppose he is becoming a talker a, a true introvert will not be uh, no an extrovert due to covid but he may not be uh, what we see is that all these people who doesn't socialize much are not actually introvert some are introverts but many are not introverts because there are some other reason why you still don't get a perspective for example social anxiety it's a very common common thing because of shyness or uh, social inhibition or some kind of fear they are getting themselves away from people and it becomes a habit or pattern in their life they need help actually suppose somebody came out this covid acted positive so sometimes we have to tell uh, we have to say thank to covid for many reasons some people changes because of covid some cruel person become a sympathetic person <laughs> this kind of things happens but it is good positive that he turned out to be a socializing person good let us encourage it uh yes sir uh now the second is second question is from jins jos how can we prevent the society from suicide and what's the role of the psychologist in this pandemic situation question from jins jos i think, I think uh, Uh, the, that aspect I mentioned, but if we go to this into the details, prevention is the primary focus now. See what is the title of this theme? This year's theme is working together. One person cannot prevent. I cannot prevent. We have to be with others to prevent. We have to look into the. Suppose I am seeing one person. i have to look into this individual factors what is making him or risk factors is better to say risk factors for people as i mentioned 